to speak up. Perfect. Uh, raise your hand and we will give you a mic, but feel free to write in the chat every scene starting from introductions to your questions or your concerns during all the events. And yes, recording is started. Perfect. Okay. Uh, now uh, let us introduce ourselves. We have two hosts today. Uh, I am on behalf of Work Academy and Diana on behalf of Edera. So I start with myself. Uh, my name is Olga. Many of you already know me. Uh, my passions are software engineering and learning and development. I am also the CEO and co-founder of Work Academy, where we create a lightweight modern learning management system for growing companies. And uh, I really love to be in learning and development environment. I think it's a great environment where people learn together and share knowledge. So happy to be here today with you and share insights from 2023 and project into 2024 and now to Mike to Diana. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Diana and I'm Chief Operating Officer of Adera. Adera is the biggest educational uh, provider in Ukraine uh, and with that I'm also a former learning and development specialist at Conto, uh, French scale up. And today I will be the host for today's insightful discussion and indeed this year been quite the journey in learning world. Uh, so we have uh, some fantastic L&D leaders here to share their stories and strategies. Uh, let's get comfortable and introduce yourselves to uh, Item, the mic is yours. All right, yes. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Olga and Diana, for having me today. Um, I'm Haytham Hamid, 39 years old. I live in Berlin, Germany, where I was also born and raised. And I'm the head of training and education at Clark. And as you can tell from the slide, I'm an optimist. Yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> um, I work at Clark now for one and a half year, and we are basically the number one insurance broker in your pocket. Um, that's what we would like to become and what, what we call us and what we're trying to achieve and uh, I'm taking care, especially for the um, sales team in um, at Clark. And um, yeah, I'm happy to share my thoughts um, uh, regarding LD in 2023 and what's next to come in 2024. So I'm looking forward to the session. Thank you. Thank you, Haitem. Haitem. Yeah. So um, Tamara, you're up next. I think so. Thank you, Haitem. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm very glad to be here, and thank you. Uh, Olga and Diana for inviting. Um, I'm a talent development head at uh, Skyab Airlines, a Ukrainian airline, uh, and join up to our operator, uh, one of the leaders in Ukrainian markets. Um, I've been with the company for two years. Um, previously, I'm also um, ex HRBP, HR director, uh, LD specialist, and so on and so forth in a big multinational company. Um, I'm certified as senior HR professional in HRM. I love LD, that's my favorite area in HR. Um, I've been in this for more than 15 years now. Uh, I'm also a mom of two sons, quite optimistic, I should say, as well, too. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm looking forward to this discussion. Uh, ask your questions. Uh, we'll be happy to discuss them together. And I'm handing the mic to Anna. I guess Anna is still connecting. Uh, no, I'm here. I'm oh, here. Perfect. perfect. Um, hello, everyone, and very pleased to be here. Uh, I'm Anna, Senior Instructional Designer at Amazon, and I used to work at Adera, and uh, I was a head of instructional design at Adera. I think 2023 was quite an exciting year, so very excited to have this discussion with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I also see, like, thank you very much to everyone who is introducing yourself. Uh, I see people from Ukraine living in Portugal as well here. Nice. And a lot of people from Ukraine uh, and uh, from uh, Portugal as well and from different parts of the world, from Berlin. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, let's move on. Diana, back to you. 
Yes. Uh, so before we fully start, uh, just a quick reminder who this event is for. Uh, obviously for L&D specialists, but it doesn't matter if you are new to L&D uh, or if you work in HR and in some like connected sphere. So corporate management, HR or L&D, uh, or if you already go to uh, expert, uh, we are welcoming you all. And of course, our uh, main goal for today's event is uh, to reflect on the year, to have fun, to brainstorm some new ideas, uh, to get inspirations, maybe to find some solutions for the next year, and of course, to get some network um, and integrate with each other. I love the, the fun part, so I'm starting yes. to have fun. <laughs> And uh, yeah, oh, uh, reflection time, uh, guys, before we start uh, uh, our panel, is this panel discussion, let's maybe have some insights from you, because you are the main um, participants of uh, this event, uh, and you've been in this field, and you definitely uh, had something happening in 2023, so uh, I will... Uh, wait, I will uh, share the screen with these um, answers. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's maybe give a couple of seconds for people to to write the um, the answers and to see this um, how is it called uh, this word cloud growing, uh, and then we can start with the first question. AI is growing, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> nice. And you can continue typing. And I think, Diana, uh, we can announce our first question and start discussion. Uh, I will just quickly switch to to uh, to the slides, but then I will put the um, word cloud back. Yes, uh, sure. It was super interesting to observe the new words and trends coming in. Uh, but indeed, let's start. So our first question is to you three and to our participants, what was the most significant change or trend in L&D that you observed in your companies this year? And how did it impact your strategy, uh, L&D and business strategy in general? Also, <laughs> who want to start up the discussion? Tamara, maybe the floor is yours. Let's start with you. Okay, thank you. I'll be the first one. Um, for us, I think, uh, and I wrote this um, in on the cloud, uh, LIFO, which stands for learning in the flow of work. I think uh, that taking into account um, that there is a war in Ukraine and lots of our employees are all around the world. Uh, we are working in such a hybrid teams um, with a very diverse experience, diverse time zones, diverse languages. Uh, also, our business um, is upscaling now, and we've grown from um, just three markets of operation to eight. We now operate uh, um, in Eastern European and Northern European countries, as well as Kazakhstan and some others. Um, and just for context, there are 1,400 employees in the company. Um, so for us, uh, this was uh, the biggest trend that I've heard of, uh, I think, um, two years ago that we have to integrate learning uh, in the flow of work um, and try to do it as smart as possible. Uh, so we switched uh, a lot to micro learning. That's another word that I think I used um, on the cloud and um, try to shorten big programs. 
into um, short online or instructor-led uh, courses, web webinars um, that would be available for all anytime. Um, and another thing that we implemented uh, uh, this year is open uh, open training so that participants could uh, volunteer to participate if this topic was uh, um, useful and interesting for them uh, just to have to still have a live discussion you know not just an online course uh, to facilitate knowledge sharing experience sharing and uh, help them um, fix uh, some of their issues that raised uh, during the work uh, in quite a friendly environment, let's say. So that's uh, from my side, and I'm open to any questions that uh, our participants might have, or maybe our colleagues would add something, our speakers. Yes, uh, I would like to follow up on this um, because um, uh, life was very interesting to me since um, we experience at Clark, since we grow from 300 to 750 people within um, five countries, uh, yeah, shaping a sort of learning and development culture. This is the first thing we need to, kind of to establish. We do several initiatives in, in sales, but not overall uh, within the group, like um, coming from one hand, so to say. And um, we discussed also integrating um, learning, um, micro learning uh, tools or, or um, type of, of uh, learning possibilities for instance, into Slack with some quizzes, like um, getting people where they're already working on. But um, yeah, we, we didn't uh, finally decide to do that. And so I'm very curious to know, Tamara, um, what your experience um, like you gained there from um, working or integrating LIFO into your uh, workflow? I can definitely add that uh, um... Our learners, our colleagues uh, definitely appreciated uh, more um, frequent uh, um, engagement. And this was actually even an expectation from our top team to not do something, you know, one big project a year or many, many small ones for everyone, uh, but yeah. to have regular engagement with different groups. Um, so we did uh, a series of micro learning sessions for um, top and middle managers, uh, but we also introduced a lot of other initiatives to support the continuous learning culture, the one you already mentioned, uh, via regular communications from our corporate university, including not only um, email, for example, or Teams uh, channel that we use, but also Telegram and, uh, uh, you know, other messengers. Um, we also um, tried to widen our corporate library uh, for them to have uh, a place to go um, for the skills, for the knowledge, actually, that they need. Uh, of course, you cannot gain more skills from, from just reading a book. Um, and I think the feedback uh, mainly was uh, uh, quite appreciative um, because we provide more opportunities than what they usually had, especially in 2022, of course, uh, taking into account situation in Ukraine. Um, and uh, more managers uh, mentioned that they have such a lack of time and uh, um, so many other priorities that it's very hard for them to find time, you know, for two or three day trainings as they used to, um, especially during COVID times and uh, before. Uh, so I think it helped a lot, and I really like the concept overall, learning in the flow of work and learning culture. Did I answer, yeah. Ethan? Yeah, also. yes, sure. Thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, just to add to what my colleagues said, I think learning in the flow of work has been a big one, and it will stay a big one because we are learning from practice as humans and learning the flow of work allows us to leverage this practice and provide more practice to learn from and not from the book or a course or a video. Um, I think also the big one has been artificial intelligence as also on this slide, AI is the biggest, are the biggest two letters. Uh, it has been a huge trend which allows to improve a lot of things in L&D, uh, including providing more practice and providing more of a learning in the flow of work. Uh, because, for example, we could improve learning English with AI instead of learning with a tutor. We could use AI as an English speaking uh, both person and uh, tutor. Uh, and uh, Or we can use AI to provide feedback. So AI has been kind of uh, in addition to all these uh, learning from practice and learning from feedback and learning in the flow of work.
Great, thank you. Uh, uh, indeed, thank you very much for sharing such a perspectives. I fully agree with Anya uh, regarding the AI, because, for example, in Adera, as a provider of content and educational services, uh, we as a team started to use AI a lot like much, much more, and that boosts the whole production processes. And Ole, I was wondering, how did this trend and some others influence your sphere as uh, LMS providers? Oh, a lot. Uh, so uh, in 2023, so for example, if before uh, L&D people were asking like, uh, hey, can I just uh, import uh, some SCORM file into your LMS? that was the most uh, um, important for them. Now they ask, uh, uh, do you have uh, AI integrations, uh, some content generation AI things? Uh, they ask more about gamification. They ask more about uh, different micro learning formats. So I think that um, uh, the, all these trends that uh, were put here, they also impact uh, the LMS providers, of course, because we have to be up to date and we have to also integrate these things and help uh, learning and development professionals um, or using the tools with uh, all the trends that are there. So definitely, yes. And I think that we can move to our next question unless uh, our participants want to add something. Uh, but you can add at any time. So <laughs> let's move, right? Yeah, exactly. And we like partially already uh, started answering this question. But anyway, uh, in what ways have you integrated new technologies or AI especially uh, in your LND programs in 2023 and what impact have this had? Especially I'm wondering how it works at uh, such big companies as uh, yours, uh, Amazon, Clark and SkyApps, because when I was working at Conto, uh, we had some very strict policies uh, by using AI and integrating, even though it was like one year ago. But I know that the company hired like AI lawyer to make it like super strict oh. uh, for for good reasons, obviously. So Anya, maybe you can share first. Um. Yeah. Sure. I'll just add also a legal note that whatever I'm sharing is uh, not from. Amazon or on Amazon's behalf, it's on my behalf. Um, as for using AI technologies, uh, yeah, thank you, Olga. Um, it's for using AI technologies at work. Well, obviously, ChatGPT and Google Bard have been on the news a lot, and we have internal policies on how to use and not to use these technologies and what to use and not to use them for. For example, of course, confidential and business data should not go into any third party tools. Um, generally, not only for L&D. Uh, but when we are talking about L&D, I think uh, there is a lot of potential to integrate AI. And uh, there are tools like Beyond, for example, if this is a tool to create learning videos, they have integrated a lot of AI functionality right into the tools. So for example, we used to create content, we used to create uh, educational videos with Beyond uh, and we had to do a lot of things from scratch and now Beyond has this option to basically write a prompt what I want the video to be about and then uh, the video is generated by AI and some assets are generated by AI and even the voiceover can be generated by AI. So this is a very simple use case which just covers content creation and I feel like L&D is moving away from content creation but even for content creation AI has been already able to streamline some of the processes and make them more efficient uh, and just simply faster. Uh, and as for practice, as I mentioned before, I personally see a lot of potential to use AI for uh, language practice or for communication practice and for providing feedback, but this would be a more complex solution and I haven't seen anything in the market yet uh, that would fully address this use case. Yeah, um, AI is everywhere. <laughs> um, also at our company. And um, I think ChatGPT influenced us really by creating content. But let me start first. We integrated Work Academy as a platform this year um, into our uh, company, which I'm uh, really happy about. And 
as I realized, as soon as I realized that we uh, that OpenAI is integrated into Work Academy, that was like a game changer for me because content creation take can take some time, right? And um, doing it with ChatGPT integrated in Work Academy was like heaven for me because it was super easy. You write what you need, you get the answers. Of course, you need to adjust them. Like, don't just copy and paste it. Read through it and make sure it hits the right target group. Um, but in the end, as um, Anna just stated, it's um, like saves you a lot of time and makes thing, things much more easier. So you can really focus maybe on even um, who do you want to address with certain initiatives uh, regarding L&D, like whether it's say it's uh, senior states, people, junior states, people, they all, all have different stages of development. So you really need to think about um, yeah, what kind of content or um, what kind of micro learning approaches you want to give to those people. Um, and you can really spend more time on, on doing um, those things instead of creating content. Another thing for, for us, especially important since we're operating in five countries, is the language barrier. And um, we're just starting like we're having an international um, sales unit where we want to um, yeah, coach people with the same approach through all out the countries. And we are now thinking about how we can use ChatGPT to easily translate content we have created for Germany, um, uh, especially to English or to, to French. And this is uh, also a use case we are going to experiment with in the future. Is it me who's hearing? Oh, no, it was someone who I muted already. <laughs> happy that not, not just me okay um uh what else just one tool i would like to to mention as well because we we are using it now really heavily is typeform um to gain surveys um not just from customers regarding the consultation experience they had with the sales consultant but also we use it internally in, inter, internal for um the QAs, like quality assurance purposes, where we want to find out um, how the consult consultants uh, perform regarding um, yeah, our um, guidelines, so to say, and where we see improvements uh, or where we see like um, potential of improvements so we can, as a training team, get into there and develop those people in those areas. We uh, yeah, got feedback from QA and also from the consultation uh, process. Awesome. I'd like to add here to Hazel, um, because I think we have a similar challenge in terms of uh, language barriers. And uh, it's not only language, I bet you would agree, it's uh, cultural differences, right? And uh, diversity of experiences overall. So people really perceive learning in different ways and uh, uh, communication struggles, uh, lots of miscommunications happen. Um, so for us, um, just to add maybe as um, what we consider uh, for myself for the next year, we consider such uh, um, platforms as digital coaching. And uh, again, two years ago, I heard uh, a very nice phrase that I liked um, to make coaching more um for everyone, you know, uh, not just the top team, for example. And we are considering using Coach Hub or Sharpist next year uh, to provide opportunities for more uh, managers and employees uh, willing to utilize this uh, tool as a development resource. And in terms of language training, um, again, uh, another challenge, as I mentioned, we consider using Preply or English DOM um, to have a corporate pass uh, or sort of um, conditions for our employees um, not um, be stuck with the tutors locally uh, and find more flexibility in terms of planning. Uh, and uh, another technology thing that I wanted to add, um, we're not that uh, smart with AI yet, I think, and I plan to um, learn and grow myself. So I, I'm planning to attend a learning technologies conference in Paris. If anyone is going, uh, type in the chat, let's connect, would be really good. I think it would be a great opportunity to learn more and to see what others are doing and also to uh, build your connection. Uh, but I always call myself, you know, type, kind of a dinosaur. Um, and, I, and I still work with, uh, for example, Microsoft tools in our company uh, because aviation is um, quite a specific um, sphere and our um, employees are more used, still more used to face-to-face -to -face training, to face-to-face -to -face meetings instead of uh, virtual. And for us, it was a big project this year 
to kind of deep dive into Microsoft 365 uh, tools uh, because that's the system we use, um, the platform we use. And we even built our talent development site uh, on the SharePoint and integrated it with the Smart HCM LMS. I see one of the participants is from that company. Uh, that's the platform we use as well. Um, so I think it's a very wide field, you know, that we all need to dig into. Uh, and I'd be happy to learn more uh, from maybe our participants' experience. We're also interested in HeyGen for video translations, video courses, because it allows you to even, you know, save your voice, intonation, emotions. I think it's great. Uh, and I think we should consider more. Nice. That was very insightful answers. And Tamara, good luck for uh, learning technologies in Paris. That's amazing conference. It's like super valuable experience there. Uh, yes, very, very cool. Okay, what do we have in the chat? I've got an example of a failed AI implementation. Oh, Natalia, if you are here and if you're comfortable to speak up, maybe you can share it as well. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me well? Okay, uh, so I work for a company that uh, is famous for its very specific coding boot camps. So it does coding boot camps with a very specific style. And when I was invited on board, we decided to do a new boot camp, an online one, because they never did online courses and they needed someone with experience. We worked together with um, our creative director and came up with the concept of not just implementing AI in content creation, but also making it uh, like a main character of the course. As you know, storytelling is important for learning. And this was a part of storytelling, being the an AI with a specific name, being the main character who basically talks to all students and gives them, gives them assignments and delivers the, the learning assets to them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our test group showed that using an uh, AI as a content generation, uh, as a content generation asset is really useful, but the tone of voice is extremely difficult to configure. Uh, we used several different uh, mm, so-called AIs, basically neural networks, the Notion AI, uh, ChatGPT, and a bit of Bard. And uh, unfortunately, a tone of voice that it used had to be corrected at all times because basically it uh, slipped down to being almost rude at times. And it reduced student interaction almost to zero by the end of the course. They were even afraid to speak to each other. So we decided to remove this character and make it like a mascot this time uh, and uh, no longer use AI for generating messages to students. And uh, our interaction basically went up, uh, went up and now students are talking to each other, sharing solutions, sharing their thoughts. Because before uh, I conducted a feedback session with them, they were afraid of interacting with this so so called soulless uh, entity. So uh, bringing back very uh, bringing back real people who talk to the students worked well. But we still use uh, AI for generating some of the more mundane educational content. So here it is. May I add something to that? Um, because I was also thinking about um, what Anna just said, and there's a connection between what you, you've just mentioned and uh, Anna regarding using um, AI for video creation, um, like Syntegia or, or tools like that, where you have artificial, um, like sort of artificial people sitting in front of the camera and talking to you. And I would like just to have your opinion, like how people do react to that. Because what we do basically is we try to find people within our teams to use them as a, um, yeah, like um, as a booster, so to say, um, to, trend, to, to bring the information, to, to bring um, the learning content to the people, like coming from their own team. 
like best practice sharing, for instance, right? And so people can really uh, better connect to, to, to that, what they've been like um, trained on, so to say. So um, I'm very, very curious to hear uh, from, from you, Anna, uh, regarding those AI videos. What are your experience with that? Because I, I can really imagine like looking into an AI face, so to say. Yeah, to be very honest, in case with Synthesia, I don't really see much of a use for that, okay. because if I see a human in the video, I want this human to be an expert usually. Otherwise, why would I have a human uh, presenter? What I was referring to was uh, Vyond. So Vyond allows you to create kind of cartoonish videos and this takes a lot of time so they added a lot of ai functionality that allows you to create cartoonish assets and voiceovers and like scenes just faster than usually so i'm not really interested in human yeah in, in trying to recreate a human in synthesia i know that other lnd teams have use cases for that though so it's just in my case i don't have use cases for mm -hmm. trying to recreate humans uh, but uh, yeah so i don't have much experience with that and i don't fully understand the use case i prefer still a human a human yeah. human on the video yeah okay cool thank you very much could you share the link of of the platform uh, you just talked about yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. Thanks. Great. Cool. Very interesting. Um, all right. Uh, we have 25 minutes left. So maybe let's let's move forward because we have three more questions to uh, answer and to discuss. Um, <clears throat> can I just so, add, um, yeah, I will just add very briefly to this one. Uh, uh yeah so uh, of course we were kind of forced to integrate uh, ai into our academy so this also uh, touched us uh, but it was quite a fun experience and uh, as hatem by the way i didn't pay hatem to promote work academy in any way uh, as hatem pointed out it helped a lot so basically what we did is that <clears throat> every editable field where you uh uh, put content into your online course at Work Academy. Every uh, editable field is powered by OpenAI. So it's like ChatGPT, but uh, embedded into um, uh, content creation and it also keeps the context. So you can ask, ask it like, uh, help me to identify learning outcomes for this course. And the second uh, prompt can be uh, create me the first paragraph and it already knows what for so uh, uh that was uh, the impact of uh, ai boom uh, at work academy and yeah let's move to the next question mm -hmm. uh yeah let's talk about culture of continuous learning and development i bet many many of green organizations have it so can you share the approach you implemented this year to foster the culture of learning and development within your companies? And maybe, maybe you want to name the first uh, uh, person who should answer? I could, I could go for it first if you want to, um, because um, since culture is a huge uh, topic uh, at Clark, like probably um, as in your companies as well. Well, what, what we created is um, lunch and learn, for instance, on a regular basis to get people together, which is really cool because that, that's coming not, not from our department, that's coming from our culture department um, because um, you get also um, vouchers or you can order food um, when you're in the office uh, and you just share the screen with, 15 to 20 people and really listen to a one hour session regarding topics um, which are important to us. Um, that is really, really cool. And when I speak about the behalf of sales, we, we definitely have um, many initiatives. Um, for instance, we have a, a podcast we do uh, only for our sales team, which is called Good Sellers, uh, which is a reference to the movie, if someone of you is aware of that, where we uh, highlight like best practices, um, celebrate achievements from several sales consultants and how they did achieve it, so um, other people can, yeah, can try try to achieve that as well, um, and bring some insights just from the company 
or, or within the company to the teams with, uh, throughout the different departments so we can uh, really uh, break uh, barriers um, everywhere and yeah we become more of, of one one Clark uh, so to say as, as we call it um, yeah which what is also interesting and this is like also a, a glimpse into 24 but we call it a 360 a CPO so it's a 360 consultant performance review where we want to have as much as data uh, regarding the sales consultation process um, with each sales consultant to really make sure that we can create learning content, especially for the individual needs, which is, I think, really tough, especially um, when we have so many social media platforms where you also could learn, right? We have YouTube, we have um, Instagram, we have X, we have like really a variety of social media platforms where learning is also um, yeah, a part of it for sure. Uh, YouTube, not to, uh, not to forget. And um, so we need to kind of stay competitive and see like um, what we can learn from like, so to say, the outside world and bring it into the company to make yeah, learning much more engaging and, and, and fun. Thank you. Yeah. So happy to hear what yes. others have to say to that. I can add uh, just a little bit uh, about our um, continuous learning culture. I think I've mentioned already about the micro learning and uh, library and um, uh, communications from our um, corporate university. But I think for me, uh, still the most important thing is um, that our top team has to um, role model behavior of continuous learning and development themselves, because if they do not believe in it, this won't happen at, at lower levels. Um, and uh, uh, we had quite an uh, unsuccessful um, pilot with individual development plans, I should say, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, uh, I think it's fair to share successes and failures. And uh, thank you for Natalia again uh, for sharing her example. Uh, and I realized that uh, they, again, they are so busy and uh, so swamped with the challenges that we have, especially, of course, innovation and tourism. It's, you know, like a constant firefighting. Um, and it's very hard to plan long term and to, um, again, to prioritize your own development um, that uh, I suggested this year for them to choose just one action step that they will focus on this year. It could be something even smaller. So for somebody, it's a regular coaching activity. For our um, CEO, for example, we uh, signed up for a, a short uh, CEO course because uh, he uh, moved from uh, one area of expertise to another. And uh, we understood it's important for them, uh, even you know, in terms of network building, not just in terms of knowledge and skills gaining. He knows what he's doing, but he has to have a bit more of you know, a wider experience. And uh, um, we also try, I try to encourage them to visit uh, more external events, um, not only also as listeners, uh, but as participants as well as active participants and share their challenges and lear uh, learnings um, and gain experience from others um, outside of the country specifically, again, because we are upscaling our business attending different conf conferences as, as we HR usually do. Um, but uh, again, not so much for our CEOs, for example. So I think it's important. It's still important. And uh, I try to support that and uh, inspire them and motivate them to, to stay on top of their own skills and, uh, you know, to continuously learn. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tamara. Anya, do you have anything to add to? to yeah, that? I just wanted to add to that. It really resonated to me, the leadership development, because the leadership is the role model for the employees. And uh, I mean, leadership is very busy. And of course, they don't always have time to, to for traditional learning. But usually they have coaches or mentors or they are doing something, learning through practice that they could share. And another mechanism for continuous learning is for leadership to celebrate the learning of their employees. So even if the leadership themselves don't have something to share, like a mentorship experience or something like that, uh, they can always have a few slides in the all hands 
uh, mentioning and recognizing the employees that have learned something and implemented this to improve processes or to launch new projects, and hence giving the visibility to the employees as well as celebrating the culture of learning. Awesome. Yes, indeed, very, very interesting points regarding the role models and overall culture. Nice. Very cool. Okay, the uh, bigger part is done already. We reflected a lot uh, regarding the this year and the last year. Uh, and I guess now it's time to see uh, which trends again and strategies uh, going to shape the next year in our sphere. Yes. And uh, we also have a question to uh, to the participants. I will, <clears throat> uh, Diana, can you share again the, the link to, to the um, uh, word cloud uh, in the chat? And uh, yeah, so we are done with 2023. Let's move on to 2024. And uh, maybe you want to change uh, something uh, there. And let's, um, uh, let's see. We have uh, uh, we have fifteen minutes left, and we have question from our audience. Diana, I move back to you. Yes, perfect. I hope uh, the link is uh, correct. Otherwise, use the QR code, please. Um, all right, and uh, since you are writing, yes, and typing already, cool, everything is working, amazing. Uh, Olya, can you get back to the to the slides, please? So we start discussing the next year. Uh, so uh, exactly as I said before, what trends do you predict that gonna shape L and D in twenty twenty four and even beyond? And are there some ways of preparation and how you as experts and a specialist already preparing for this? Uh, who wants to start? Maybe, uh, maybe Haytham? Now you can hear me, sure. Um... What we are definitely going to experiment with um, is uh, GPTs, um, since we are since we want to establish a f sort of database. Um, especially, you need to understand um, we have like a lot of sales consultations, and um, the sales consultants do like get confronted with very inv individual needs and questions from, coming from the customers, and sometimes, so they're asking other colleagues, uh, for instance, in the Slack channel for. A support or for an answer and we want like sort of use gpts for in that case especially um yeah for just uh, getting the right answer on a quick hand to uh, get the information to the customer and i think there's a lot of more potential we can use that and we're just um literally figuring out like um what kind of gpts we could also use in the future but this is one thing um yeah we, we're going to focus on in 2024 Tamara, Anya, what do you think? What are your assumptions? I I would add, uh, well, GPTs and AI definitely will stay a trend. They are just here to stay. So that will also mean that there will be a trend on acquiring AI skills among L&D professionals, but also among employees inside the company. Um, but I really like the point on this slide with the word cloud, incorporate more metrics. Uh, because I think that currently with the AI and other technologies that are coming in, it's getting easier to collect data and analyze it without having very advanced data science skills. And I think that we'll see a further trend on that, that it will be easier to collect metrics and measure them and plan more metric-based and number-based interventions and less of an intuitive training. Uh, I can only add that I uh, fully agree with uh, everything mentioned, and it's very important for us to um, connect the dots, but in order to connect them, you have to collect them, so to keep track of our metrics is very important, definitely. Um, I think uh, for our um, 
area for our sphere, it's also important to continue working on uh, uh, internal trainer school. That's what we do. And I think uh, we are quite unique uh, in this, uh, in terms of uh, aviation and tourism industry. Um, we have our internal train the trainer course and uh, it keeps growing. We've already had a second school. Uh, so our cabin crew um, stewards uh, and stewardesses uh, who want to um, reskill uh, or upskill in this case maybe and become also internal trainers for their um, colleagues and share experience. We teach them how to become a trainer. We give them online tools for online training and that way we kind of grow as a corporate university, uh, incorporate internal experience and knowledge of um, specialists in their areas um, and uh, continue promoting learning culture again and the importance of continuous learning. So I think uh, uh, this is also part of a trend uh, that I see in terms of moving learning in-house and uh, utilizing own experience and not just buying some external courses, you know. This is very cool. And um, yeah, well mentioned the incorporate more more metrics. Um, what I ju was just thinking of, um, so we call it like, and most of you probably are familiar uh, who are longer in L&D is performance-based training as well. So um, we really want to make sure that we uh, can hit individual learning path to, to each sales consultant person who's going to learn in the future which is, um, I think, very, very, very important. And um, yeah, therefore, we are using the approach of like having a 360 degree um, view on, on the performance or on the consultation process. And um, yeah, looking forward, like how, how things will work out. We're currently working on that for sure. And we'll see how AI can support us there in the future. Because uh, Anna's right, like I have a spreadsheet with, I don't know, 10 tabs with a different variety of numbers. And um, if AI can support us there, um, making things much faster and easier to read, um, also, um, that would be a great benefit for us. Olya, what about you? Of, uh, of course, we have to be uh, on top of things. So for Work Academy, uh, definitely um, uh, see what uh, what can we, how can we help uh, with analytics and with uh, reporting tools to help learning and development professionals to uh, to uh, incorporate these metrics and to uh, improve uh the tra trainings uh, on based on that uh so definitely this and also what is all, always on our radar is making uh, content creators life uh, easier and easier with uh, integrations uh, like ai it's one thing but also it comes to a user interface we are constantly improving that so that would be our big thing for uh, 2024 um and what about you diana for adera are there any big things for 2024 uh, i guess yes because i really like the comment of tamaras regarding internal train the trainer program which is very very efficient based on my experience and i see that a lot of companies are really implementing this kind of initiative to really grow the experts like inside but as Adara is still an external provider, uh, we also need to keep an eye and observe and market on that. Uh, however, now there is also kind of like a, um, a discussion around like what is better, what is more efficient, corporate, um, like L&D or external providers. And of course there is no uh, perfect answer for that. So I guess we all are safe. Cool, very interesting uh, words and assumptions were written on the slide. Amazing gamifications and supports. Nice. Um, all right, and I guess we can wrap up with the very last question uh, regarding yours, the most significant learning this year. And if any, how will this influence your approach and strategy moving forward?
And uh, maybe Tamara, you want to go first? Uh, okay, I'll try. I think um, for me, it's that um, human or power skills uh, still remain in focus. Um, in our area, we still teach a lot of technical skills and hard skills uh, because of the specifics. But I still believe that um, it's much harder to change yourself, your attitude, your beliefs, uh, um, and um, what you're used to um, in terms of communication, cooper co cooperation with others. Uh, so for us, I think um, we'll continue to focus on uh, so-called soft skills, but uh, I really like the new naming power skills I've heard or human skills. And uh, this year we had a big campaign uh, together with our internal communications and employer brand, um, building on our values and explaining our corporate competencies to all. Uh, but next year we plan to focus on our leadership competencies specifically in here i will add to what anna said i think uh, because as i mentioned uh, managers uh, role model but still you know i think middle managers drive the business really they are in between they have to understand the strategy and goals but they have to motivate and engage their teams to deliver uh, those so um, we are planning on um, designing together with uh, some uh, external provider micro learning e-courses for middle managers based on our leadership capabilities we revise them based on our uh, new strategy with upscaling our business as i mentioned and this is what we plan to do um that's the main. And as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to study myself a bit more on uh, uh, new technologies and we'll see what we can implement uh, together with our partners. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I'd like to add um, two words uh, we've seen on the slide before and we talked about already is learning culture <laughs> because um, it is hard to implement a culture of learning into a whatever I think startup may be easier um, than a corporate. Um, but this is something we definitely going to work on next year as well. Uh, we have a leadership program already running and we, we are going to re redesign that. Um, so we kick things off there in January where we uh, invite um, all the senior leaders coming from uh, all, all the five countries together. And then we will have another program, uh, which is um, a coaching program for our team needs, also on in international level. So reoccurring training formats as well, um, just to keep the people uh, engaged and motivated to learn in the future. I think um, this is necessary with the lunch and learn format we have also. So um, people really get used to it and see the benefit of learning. And as I mentioned before, it's I think it's really a competitive environment. Um, so the question needs to be, why should I use an internal platform for learning or why should I listen to that podcast or why should I lose that? Uh, should I spend time on that learning um, content instead of, I don't know, watching YouTube videos, for instance, or um, following someone on Instagram on X, whatever. So um, we really need to be competitive and uh, improve ourselves every time. So um, that is what we're going to stick on in 24 as well. Great. Anya, Olya, what about you, your experiences? I, mean, I would, I, I totally agree with Tamara and what she said about the human skills and the important, uh, importance of human skills because uh, it looks like we will have all this awesome technology that will do a lot of things that we're currently doing manually, for example, content creation. Uh, it will not do it on its own. Of course, we'll have to review it, but still the technology will do a lot of things, but there's still collaboration and communication between people that cannot be replaced by technology. Actually, technology will free us up to collaborate more and communicate more and manage more, which means that the demand for soft skills will only grow and we will have to address it as L&D leaders and get get everyone prepared for this very collaborative future. Great, thank you so much. As for me, I think uh, we um, this year, and it's even not about uh, the technology or work academy uh, as a platform, but uh, as a company, we started doing more webinars and events and uh, that's great bringing community together and learning together uh, was great for us and I think we will do more 
uh, of that in 2020, 2024, because um, this is the way to learn about challenges. And also it helps uh, to grow our product because uh, we learn in community what challenges and uh, trends are, and then we can translate it into the product features. So that, that's the most insightful uh, thing for us. Thank you. Exactly. I guess you, Ola, and Work Academy, you've done a great job building the community because the amount of events we had together and you had by your side online in Portugal, in Germany, uh, is a lot, a lot. And we have so many things to learn from you. And I guess as for me, my the most significant learning this year in terms of like business LNLD was um, everything related to metrics and data driven approaches, because without the data, I feel like I'm just another person with an opinion. And it's great, but still it doesn't work like that. So this year we uh, did a great job at Adera um, involving this data driven approaches, but there is still a part to do and to finish next year. And by saying to finish, I mean, just like finish the basics and have, have our uh, basic correct, but then apply, apply more and more. Great. And uh, I I think that we can wrap it up also, it's time, right? Uh, so here, if you want to, uh, or even if you don't, please follow Work Academy and Adara, where we, you will have insights uh, on um, these events uh, and uh, some updates on them. So please follow us on LinkedIn. Let's stay connected. And um, let me also paste here uh, my calendar link if you want to uh, at any point chat about LMSs and uh, the trends in LMSs, please uh, talk to me. Uh, I will not push you into buy and work academy. I really, you see, I love discussing the challenges and trends. So uh, if you want to talk about LMS, uh, talk to, to me. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for participating today. I it, it, I think I never saw such a participative audience on any of our LND Happy Spaces as today. Uh, people were really engaged, and the chat is full of insights and uh, uh, some um, suggestions and ideas it's great thank you so much because whatever we do without participants it's uh, it's nothing so really thank you very much for for your being here and participating so actively and thank you so much Anya Tamara and Haytham uh, thank you for sharing your insights for being here and sharing your knowledge and uh, ideas and everything and let's stay in touch and Diana back to you um, uh, for wrapping this session up Yes, just adding a few words to your speech. Um, follow Adara too, and I'm also uh, putting my LinkedIn here and Adara's as well. Um, anytime you need um, to have your L&D uh, analysis in the company or a new online course or any kind of online product uh, for the employees, uh, let's keep in touch. Uh, and thank you all for your active participation and amazing webinar. Uh, and I guess we will meet next year, of course. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a great day. Bye. You too, guys. Bye.